I'm Tom Nugent. I'm with Intellectual Ventures Labs. One of the crazy ideas that came out of an invention session a couple years ago was that you could try and kill mosquitoes with lasers. And this may sound futuristic, um, but the people who came up with it were from the Star Wars missile defense system. And instead, we came up with a mosquito defense system. So we're going to take lasers and shoot mosquitoes from a long way away to kill them. And while this is really fun and cool, the ultimate benefit for this is to try and control malaria. So, so if you're trying to kill mosquitoes with less light, thus energy, one idea they had was to use ultraviolet light, where DNA absorbs very heavily. You could break apart strands of DNA or RNA and cause organs to fail and maybe do it for a very low energy cost. So we decided to get out some uh, lamps so this is a device that's used in biology labs for sterilizing surfaces, and it kills bacteria with ultraviolet light. Now, this lamp does not uh, provide any shielding, and it's sort of awkward to put the really thick sunscreen or gloves on all the time you want to do an experiment. So we also got a couple of these boxes that have, again, the mercury lamps in them that generate UV light. And then we put mosquitoes in here and let them fly around. We'd stick it in here, and let it go, and everything else would shield it. We'd, we'd let the mosquitoes uh, fly around. It turns out that mosquitoes have a very robust DNA repair mechanism. And that, combined with their thick exoskeleton, was protecting them from most of the ultraviolet light. And one day, while we're working on the mosquitoes, just showed up. We said, wow, an EEPROM eraser, awesome. <clears throat> Why did we care? Well, an EEPROM eraser uses ultraviolet light to erase EEPROM chips. So it's not at all intended for biological use, but we were able to put we were able to put mosquitoes in here and expose them to the ultraviolet light and see if maybe if we just got a little bit more intensity, if that would be enough to start causing them damage from the ultraviolet light. Unfortunately, they didn't, unless we left them in here for way too long. And so what we were finding out is that the energy density wasn't the only factor. It really mattered as how hard you hit them with the ultraviolet light because you need to get past the exoskeleton. So it was, it was definitely clear that we had to turn to UV lasers in order to get the brightness of the light to hit them. And this was a UV laser hooked up with a system that would uh, analyze bits of material that were blasted off of a sample. So with this system, we were able to take an individual mosquito and place it under the beam and zap them. One of the problems, though, was that the beam that it makes is really, really small. So we would do this, do these tests and say, yeah, we can you know, do some, some serious damage to mosquitoes, but it was not quite what we were expecting for a, a real laser system in the field. So we eventually got a real UV laser that you see here that had higher power and we hoped could do what we wanted. This one came out of a system that was used for drilling holes in circuit boards. Right here, you can see the cradle to grave box. So the mosquitoes would get knocked out, fall to the floor, and then we would uh, let the CO2 just sort of trickle in, and then we would just move the box around while we were zapping them. So we target a mosquito, and then check on them a day later to see who was still alive and who was dead. So this laser was able to get us up into the power density that we thought would be enough to get through the mosquito's exoskeleton and deposit enough UVC photons into the, the sort of inner living organs. And our experimental results show that, in fact, that is what happens. So ultraviolet lasers are one way we could kill uh, mosquitoes. But there are cheaper kinds of lasers out there. And you could kill them instead of by doing DNA damage, you could kill them just by heating them up, giving them an extreme fever. So one way to do that is with perhaps visible or near-infrared diode lasers. Diode lasers are very cheap because they're used in so many different things. And we have here one that we bought on eBay. Sometimes we let the laser go for a longer period of time than is barely necessary to kill them. And in that case, we start burning them. And you can see some of the videos where we start burning wings or other, or other parts of the mosquito. And burning mosquitoes smells really nasty. However, when you do just enough to kill them within a day, but don't burn them, we actually leave no visible marks. It's almost like the perfect crime. The mosquito has been killed, but there's no visible sign of what killed them. And again, we're trying to conserve energy and do just what's necessary to kill them, 
so that we're not wasting energy in, a, in an area where we're only going to rely on solar power, for example. What if you wanted to get a system even less expensive? What if you could get a laser that's used in consumer electronics that is sold by the millions and you could get for $10 in bulk? Early results are suggesting that we can, in fact, kill mosquitoes using very low power and cheap lasers if we do everything just right. So our goal has been to design and build a system that can shoot mosquitoes with lasers in a way that is practical to deploy in nations where malaria is endemic and also to make it safe for people to be around. Safety can be done in many ways, partially by choosing lower energy lasers and also by making a system that is smart enough to not fire if there are people nearby. There's a lot of work to be done before you can manufacture thousands of these and deploy them in the field, but all of the foundation has been laid to fight mosquitoes and in that way help to eradicate malaria.